Hey there. It's your pal Double D. <laughs> Another video. The the news is coming fast and furious. <laughs> First it's PBS putting their foot in their mouth, insulting old school D&D gamers everywhere. And now we got uh, Wizards of the Coast themselves altering the deal. That's right. They are altering Open Gaming License 1.0 from way back in the third edition days. Uh, that is the skeleton that a lot of third party uh, content producers, you know, hang their hat on. Um, so this is going to affect quite a few people. Uh, got wind of this uh, from the OGGM. So if you're not already a subscriber to his, go over, check it out. He's a uh, swell guy and he's usually right on top of this stuff. And uh, I will just give you my opinion as I see it. So without further ado, let's go ahead and take a look at what uh, Wizards of the Coast is uh, is cooking. All right, and here is the article from uh, Gizmodo, garbage site. But uh, give him props for, uh, for being on top of this, I suppose. D&D's new license tightens its grip on competition. Uh, the OGL, a document which allows a vast group of independent publishers to use the basic game rules created by D&D owner Wizards of the Coast significantly restricts the kind of content allowed and requires anyone making money under the license to report their products to Wizards of the Coast directly, according to an analysis of a leaked draft document dated mid-December. It'll probably be the, uh, the final one, too. And despite reassurances from Wizards last month, the original OGL will become unauthorized. <laughs> and it appears no new content will be permitted to be created under it. Bad news for Pathfinder and uh, a lot of these other uh, content creators who hang their hat on the uh, system reference document, uh, you know, which is um, part of the um, OGL. Bad, bad news. Your days are numbered. You know, the original... OGL, it was a wellspring of creativity, you know, and you could argue that it's probably the reason that D and D is in the place it is today. Now, granted, it took a you know a little downturn for fourth edition, but in the grand scheme of things, fourth edition wasn't around too long. They did cede some market share, of course, to Paizo during that time. They've kind of gotten it back, you know, with fifth edition, you know, and they're going like gangbusters now. You know, this the article just kind of talks about the uh, the OGL and the system resource document, which I'm sure about 90% of uh, you guys already know. SRD is just the uh, the bare bones rules of third edition D and D, which you can um, modify to your heart's content through the history here. Of course, you know, just saying how it was uh, published in third edition. It's been tweaked a couple of times since the release, but you know, not nothing too major. The new one um, is quite different. You know, you can see they say here that the original OGL was a short document. And if you've ever skimmed it, it's, you know, it's in the back of, you know, pretty much every third party product using it. You know, it's a very short document. <laughs> it goes from 900 words to 9,000. Addressing uh, things like blockchains and NFTs. Taking a strong stance against, oh boy, bigoted content explicitly stating that the company may terminate the agreement if third-party creators publish material that is blatantly racist, sexist, homophobic, transphobic, bigoted, or otherwise discriminatory. Well, there you go. Are you going to have an orc raid in your adventure that you're going to write? Make sure not to uh, say that they're uh, evil because these people think that you're actually talking about black people. Yes, they are insane. But that's what they think, and they can get you for that. Sexist? Well, just make sure your artwork doesn't show women too good looking. Put a couple of extra pounds on them, uh, just uh, just to be safe. No more no more chainmail bikinis. Homophobic, transphobic. I guess. What do you need pronouns now? In the um, in the NPC descriptions, bigoted and otherwise discriminatory. That is a catch all. That is uh, something so they can say, I don't like this producer. They seem to be a little too uh, centrist or right of center. And here they talk about the, uh, the wording of the agreement and how they're doing it. Essentially, the OGL was an authorized license agreement. And as long as it was authorized, people could use it. Well, now, <laughs> the new one, 
is basically saying that it's not authorized anymore. This is the new authorized, even though the uh, the old one said it was in perpetuity, you know, leading a lot of people to believe, hey, it's going to be here forever. Nothing is forever when it comes to money. These people will do what they have to to protect their money. You know, and here they say the sentiment is reiterated later in the document. The OGL wasn't intended to fund major competitors and it wasn't intended to allow people to make D&D apps, videos, or anything other than printed material for use while gaming. We are updating it to make that clear. Uh, you can kind of have a little sympathy for them, I suppose, if, you, if you'd if you like, uh, about the funding major competitors. Surely that was an unforeseen you know, consequence of the uh, open gaming license. But you know what? It's been around for how long, and they're doing as good as ever. They appear very greedy with this, even though they're, they may have some claim to it. Sometimes it's better to let that go because the collateral damage you take with your reputation, it could cost you a lot more than you're losing right now. And of course, they mention uh, Paizo and Pathfinder, which is, of course, the, the most uh, popular and well-known uh, you know, alternative to D&D. And it, of course, uses the uh, SRD, Open Gaming License, all that stuff. Chris Premis. Funny, funny how these garbage sites, these garbage leftist sites, they they have folks like Chris Premis uh, <laughs> in their Rolodex. <laughs> so he, they they all talk to each other. I uh, don't really care what he has to say. Talking about mutants and master boy, mutants and masterminds was a good game back in the day. Uh, we had a really fun campaign for about two years. Man, that was a good time. So what will happen to the original OGL? Well, that's pretty clear. <laughs> it's gone, <laughs> and it's being replaced. And it says that the original OG, OGL did not specifically outline what kind of content third-party creators could make available and profit from. The updated is very specific. Yeah, it's a, they got some lawyers involved, uh, certainly on this one. And really, it seems like they just want to protect the uh, online domain. It does not allow for anything other than um, printed m- material, and it sounds like like PDFs for use on the table. They do not want anyone else producing videos, virtual tabletops, of course, you know, VTT campaigns, computer games, novels, apps, graphic novels, blah, 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 blah. Let's talk about fan content policy. I'm not sure what that is. What is fan? I don't know why you just wouldn't sell your stuff if you're going <laughs> to do fan stuff, whatever. I don't care about that. So one of the things they're doing is there's going to be a tiered earning system. You got to, if you're going to start to produce stuff under this new one uh, they want to know how much you're making because they're going to wet their beak if you're making too much they have a tiered system i think they have some pretty funny names here they, they make it sound so cool and hip the initiate tier if you if you're uh if you're under like 50k the intermediate tier if you're uh 50k to 750k and the expert tier god these people are shameless if it's over 750k um, and they say they're only going to take a uh, take a cut if it's over 750k. My question is, well, you changed it before, so what's to stop them from just altering this agreement and going back and saying, well, you know, that revenue from 50 to 750k between there, we're gonna we're gonna take a smaller cut of that. Don't worry, you know, it won't be as much as you know the big ones. Why would you why would you produce uh, anything for this under this? It's uh, <laughs> There, there's no reason to start your own thing, you know, do, do something OGL, do your own thing. Yeah, and here they say you must register any licensed work you intend to offer for sale. Boy, how oppressive. Sign of the times, huh? And here they say, well, this, this, is, uh, this is hand in glove. <laughs> Kickstarter is D&D's preferred crowdfunding platform. No, you don't say. <laughs> Kickstarter is a garbage uh <laughs> crowdfunding site run by uh, leftists. So, of course, uh, they would find common cause with a company like Wizards of the Coast. And basically, if you're... uh, How this applies is if one of these major publishers uh, has a hit on Kickstarter and they earn um, over 750,000, they're just... They're not going to have to pay a penalty if they do it on Kickstarter. If you are on some other platform, like maybe Indiegogo or something like that, uh, and you happen to earn that much, 
they, they are going to uh, come in and uh, take a 25% royalty on your revenue, not your income, your revenue. So you gotta, you gotta take that off the top. Oof, that is brutal. So they want, of course, everybody just to go to Kickstarter. So you can avoid this, uh, this penalty, this 25% penalty. Shameless, shameless. Here it says, uh, and this is another one too. Wizards of the Coast also gets the right to use any content that licensees create, whether commercial or non-commercial. The good old days are over. You know, even if you're profiting from it, if they want to go in there and use something that you've created under it, looks like they're going to be able to do that. They have a non-exclusive perpetual. I'm going to guess perpetual means forever in this case. <laughs> Irrevocable worldwide. Sub-licensable royalty-free license to use content for any purpose. So there you have it. You know, we're just, we're kind of going back to the old times. Companies protected their stuff. You know, maybe you could view the OGL just as a, you know, as an unusual gift. They should view it, you know, with, with a little more perspective. You know, I don't, as I said, I don't think they'd be where they are right now if they uh, did not have the open gaming license in place. You know, a, a chain of events happened with the release of third edition to get them to where they are today. And yeah, there were a couple of stumbles, you know, in the middle there. Fourth edition, you know, was financially not the greatest success. Um, you know, of course, Pathfinder, you know, took took away some of their momentum. You know, but they got it back with fifth edition. <laughs> I don't know what more they want. I think they're going to uh, they're going they're going to take some heat for this, and uh, I like it because it's just gonna, it's going to force people away from that. Um, you know, we're rapidly heading to where there's going to be, you know, kind of two branches of, of gamers, I think, you know, just the, the old school. And that doesn't mean you're old. It just means you believe in playing face to face as best you can, you know, with friends around a table with physical dice you know, and having fun that way. And then there's what I would argue the, the lesser version, which is just the online Everybody's just a box on a screen. It's sort of cold. A lot of times you're playing with people you really don't know. And you're under this uh, fear that you're going to say something that somebody's going to uh, whip out an X card for. Hey, if that's how you want to roll, that's fine. But uh, you know that's how I see it. Uh, two different branches. Kind of like the... Uh, Homo sapiens and the Neanderthals. Let's hope they're the Neanderthals, huh? Let's hope in uh, 10 years uh, we kind of uh, come to an epiphany and realize, you know what? These games are a lot better <laughs> as uh, real-life social events. You're creating a little piece of art around the table. And I don't mean like performance art, like these you know, idiotic live plays that you see on YouTube. You guys are engaged you know, in a piece of uh, storytelling art. And it's uh, when it's good, it's it's really good. So that's my two cents. Hope you guys uh, have a great day. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments. If you can, uh, go ahead and like this video. And uh, if you like this kind of content, as well as other things too, I do uh, retrospectives, other sorts of uh, DM advice. Uh, go ahead and subscribe. We're over a thousand now. We are uh, on a roll, as they say. So up on the train. And um, let's see where we can take it. All right. You guys take care. Have a great rest of the day, and we will talk soon. Goodbye. What qualifies you to be a U.S. senator? You have 60 seconds. Hi. Good night, everybody.